So with all the progress that I've outlined with Java Embedded, I'd like now to invite my colleagues, Jasper Potts and Richard Baer on stage for a demonstration. Hey, guys. Peter, how's it going? <laughs> well, we'll do the handshake. Yeah. Uh, OK, you guys. Last year, chess. It was cool. Robot arms. Yep, that was cool. 3D printed dukes. I was worried. You guys set the bar extremely high for this year. It was a challenge. <laughs> OK, so what are we doing this year? Well, so Jasper's genius crew has been working really hard to try to bring you something. Um, it's a complete end-to-end -end demo, similar to last year, where we had sensors, devices, touch screens, Java ME embedded, Java SE embedded. We've got a cloud. We've got EE. We've got EE7. We've got web sockets. We've got async I.O. We've got a connect and a TV. And a web browser. OK, so a big ball of different stuff. We put it all in there. OK, so can I see it, please? I don't know. Let's unveil it, guys. There we go. OK, it looks like oh. a car. We have a car. We have a car. So, as what we mentioned, we we've got uh, some touch screens, your, your, your dashboard. You've got your uh, console display over here on the side with maps and music and everything. We've got pedals. We've got accelerometers. We've got a fan. We've got lights on the vehicle. We have an IoT gateway that talks to the cloud service. We've got a couple uh, good embedded boards here for driving the displays. Uh, touch pads for interacting with it. Jasper, why don't you go ahead and... Yep. Show the folks what you got. So we have different views. We can switch between the different views. So we thought you know, the old sort of little buttons were a bit you know, old school, so we could have touch pads on the steering wheel. Um, we can zoom in and see uh, 3D maps. We can um, start a car. I have to remember to press the brake first. A You're going to start driving on stage? And hopefully, we're not getting any K64s. Well, we had to find something that was going to break. <laughs> so as he's hitting the accelerometers and the pedals over here, one thing that you can see is that b behind these, we actually have um, three different K64 boards that are running Java ME that are on here. One is behind these pedals, and another one is down here that has like a temperature sensor and a light sensor on it. Right. And uh, it, you can see that the display goes into night mode when it's covered. Um, and all that information is on a bus that runs inside the car, talks to the clouds, to the uh, IoT gateway, which then is talking, as you can see on the diagram up there, talks to a cloud service that we have running um, that talks then to an application that's running on GlassFish um, using async I.O. in order to compute the information. And then it uses the web sockets to come and communicate with the display that we have over on this side. So as he's, as he's doing that, you've got all the different sort of sensor values that are in there. Unfortunately, the car is not going to start. Oh, I yep. forgot to mention this is an electric car. And, uh, OK, so there's a start button. There's a kick it from behind button. And yeah. you guys can it, figure out. So when you guys mm -hmm. were building this, you know, we've talked a lot. And I'm out traveling around and meeting customers and things. We do see that there's a, a, a change that's happening, in particular in automotive, with IoT. And that there is a need to kind of change what was once kind of fixed development. It goes with the car to have something which is more adaptable in automotive. That's right. So um, for example, in this case where we were doing an electric car, one of the things that you want to keep track of is what's the battery behavior like. So you can imagine that you have uh, vendors who are producing batteries out of a bunch of different factories. And um, you want to be able to keep track of, of how well they're recharging each time. Um, you might be wanting to do the same thing in terms of like uh, the brake capabilities and the other sort of components that go into the car. And by collecting all that information and sending it to the cloud, the automotive vendor is able to give consumers a better user experience, a better consumer experience. Because they can, for example, realize that you're coming up to some point where you need to uh, have maintenance. And they can send you, you know, proactively information that says, this is your particular case. They can use some big data analysis in order to figure that out. Well, and not all cars wear the same, right? That's right. You know, Your driving drivers. can wear something out faster than someone else's driving. That's right. So hopefully we're going to get a yeah, we're gonna, some we, help here. From 
We got the crew. This doing is our, our fun of running on bleeding edge stuff. So, you know, these little guys, the K64s, have 128K of RAM. Uh, we're running on really tiny. And that stuff. RAM is for the entire virtual machine, plus whatever code, you know, stack is there. We're getting a reboot, plus the uh, whatever user code that you have running, which is actually really phenomenal that they're able to to get a virtual machine running in that space. OK, so the chess god was, the demo god for chess was really kind to you last <laughs> year. Yeah, and he's yeah. back this year, and we're going to yeah. reboot. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it came back up. It came back up. So can we stop? Try and see if he starts. Hey, well, that looks yes, promising. Buddy. Start motoring along here. There we go. Yeah. Now we're driving. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So tell us what's happening yeah. now as he's accelerating. So, so we have Java, Java sound running. We can um, generate all the sound effects. We, can, um, we have 3D maps. We have 2D maps. We can show our route over here. Of course, all running Java along. effects. Running all Java um, effects on the, on the dashboard displays. We, we can also see you know, on the left, we have all the telemetry running through the IoT server and through EE run, running web sockets. Um, so the whole sort of things. We have all of our, our sensors, so our, our brake light comes on when we brake, um, and we, we switch into to night mode. So Richard, that's showing us brake, acceleration, and battery usage. That's right. And you can, you can see how it's affecting the battery as time goes on here. So um, let's go to another screen. This is, like I was talking about before, kind of like some big data analysis you know, over a broad span of different consumers. In this particular case, we're seeing that this batch of demo batteries is kind of coming along, and it has a failure point. It's somewhere around 14,000 miles. Well, we're so, not, hold, hold on. We're not driving 14,000 miles today. Well, we, we haven't quite gone a mile yet. So yeah, we need to go 14,000 miles. Oh, well, sorry. Yeah, I hope you have plenty of time today. So. We're not driving 14,000 miles today. All right, well, Jasper, um, let's kick it up to 88 miles per hour. 88 miles an hour? Yeah. yeah. And here we go. We should. <laughs> it was the worst to wait for the reboot. <laughs> and you can see we're booking along here. And uh, we can sort of see what's happening to our battery as time goes on. And you know, if I were a really good vendor, I guess somewhere, somewhere around here, I'm going to warn the consumer that it is time for them to come in and uh, change their battery. Because, oh, and it looks like we've we got a notification. Had some sort of notification here that the uh, we got some battery, battery maintenance required within the next 400 miles. Oh shoot! Did your phone? You brought uh, a phone. I'm on sorry, stage. I got a text. Uh, it says your 2014 Duke DeLorean requires battery maintenance within the next 400 miles. <laughs> uh, local service stations reserved uh, Tuesday 9 a.m. for me. So yeah. sorry, but uh, we're we're gonna have to go get this fixed. Awesome yeah. job, you guys. Thank you very much for yeah. coming out. Thank you.